When it comes to using transit, easy to interpret maps have always been a critical part of the riding experience. Digital interactive maps allow transit agencies to provide information experiences customized to the rider's needs, providing real-time information and vehicle locations. Interactive maps can also play a role in system-wide situational awareness, giving administrators a full picture of activity and delays. I recently spoke with Will Fisher, head of special projects at the New York Metropolitan Transportation Administration. His team deploys Mapbox technology as part of a suite of tools to improve the rider experience on New York City's commuter railroads. Join me for a quick chat with Will Fisher. Hey everyone, I'm here with Will Fisher, who is the head of special projects at the MTA. Uh, he's here to talk about uh, some of the apps that he's been working on, web and mobile, um, to help New Yorkers understand where some of their trains are. Um, so before we start, or welcome, welcome, Will. And uh, love to start with just uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what your role is right now. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Chris. Um, so my role, I work, I work almost exclusively on the commuter railroads in the MTA. You, you have the subway and the bus, and then you have two of the largest commuter railroads, Metro North and Long Island Railroad um, in the country. And those are part of the MTA. And so I work very much on the railroads. Um, my team does, there are a few parts to it. One is getting real good, very good, good real-time data. Then we kind of, we process that in the cloud. And then we, and then the third part is displaying that to users. So making sure not only that you have good quality data, but it's really frictionless to access, you know, kind of, um, it, you know, it's not too many clicks away or we display it in some way that that's really easy to grok, you know, something like that. Um, and, and that's where this conversation, I think, comes in, right? Because we use a lot of GIS and Mapbox and to kind of give a very custom view to, to customers and, and we'll look at those tools. But um, anyway, a, as a whole, we kind of own the whole ecosystem. Um, and very briefly, my background is I studied computer sciences, kind of tech and transportation. Um, I, I have an MBA, and but it's a bit of a blip. Uh, I have some business experience. It's a bit of a blip in my resume, I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly a techie. Um, and the, the MBA has been helpful in, in terms of strategy, actually, and like, like, what do we decide to build and why and what's important to customers and, and what will be successful. But anyway. Well, it sounds, sounds like you're equal parts like product manager and team leader and developer and kind of doing Design. a lot. And 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 cartographer and cartographer, yes. And <laughs> we'll we'll see. So, okay, so we can't. I can't wait to see because I think there's some some very special cool. special things that come up in this transit realm uh, that may not be common on a lot of maps. So I, I can't wait to see. Um, so cool. So let's jump in. Um, you can kind of give us a quick walkthrough, and I'll I'll jump in with questions if I have them. Um, but let's look at some of your products. Sure. Why don't we start with the web app? Um, let me share my screen. See if I can make this a little bigger. I'll go to the front. Basically, this this is before we had an app, and so um, customers would uh, choose. It was pretty simple. There was no no trip planning. Customers would just choose their station um, and find the arriving trains, and then we would show it on a map. So basically, how can we replicate the, the the experience of Uber, where you can see you don't just know the ETA of the car, but you can see where the car is, and, and we thought that was a qualitatively different experience, um, especially if you don't trust the ETA, um, which sometimes makes sense. But if you can see where it is, you have a pretty good sense of how long it is. So basically, we're at Jamaica. The train, you know, I just picked a train that that that, that uh, is going to be arriving at Jamaica in, in, well, in this case, 15 minutes. But um, the map here, there's actually a lot of custom stuff right here in this map. Um, you know, we, we removed a ton of layers that, 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 you know, a lot of label layers, we, we kind of muted some of the roads and the parks, um, and even the color of the, the ocean, um, so that we can really highlight what is our infrastructure, which is, which are these tracks here and, and the station names. Um, we even did custom work on what station names to show right here, right? So you're zoomed out enough and, um, these are actually the, the big stations, um, right? So if you, if you don't do any of this custom work, if you use Google Maps, for example, and you can't do much of this custom work, you have all these labels colliding right here, right? You have, you have no control over this experience. Um, but anyway, as you zoom in, those those you'll see those 
labels show up and there's custom work even there, right? We make those bold and, and these ones not. Um, we have all sorts of stuff in terms of how to place. So we're small enough that we don't have to do it algorithmically. Like me, Will Fisher actually went through and made sure that all these labels are placed properly for every station. There are hundred and they're about 250 stations. Um, this is only over, um, yeah, you know, it might take a day or two, but, but. No, I mean, I see you have some that are at an angle. So it's, it's, it's like you're, you're putting in all the same design um, elements so that we go into a static transit map, um, but you're able to also play with some of the interactivity totally. and zoom dependent styling and things like that. Totally. Um, and I love how the, the stations, um, the stations come into apparent, like the actual station circles appear once you get to a certain zoom level. It looks great. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I forgot all the little stuff I did, right? So, <laughs> um, and then we have, you know, custom, this is obviously all custom map box stuff to, to draw the train and um, plot it on the, on the polyline that represents this, this um, train track and um, make sure that it's directed in right, you know, so that it's oriented properly. So it's all custom map box stuff here. Um, if you go in close enough, you'll actually get, because we actually know where, the, we, we know where the train is very precisely so we can show you where the cars are. Um, and that's wow. pretty accurate. So really, if you're in the first car there and you're watching this screen and you, you know, you're, you're passing by this road at the same exact time. So that's, that's down to the second. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So that, I mean, there's just, is there like a web socket or something that's bringing that information in or is it pulling? How, like, how do you get it's that? Pulling, what it does is it pulls every three-ish seconds, but then it extrapolates it in the future. So it takes the speed of the train, which we know, and it kind of extrapolates to where it should be this millisecond or so. Um, wow. And that's generally accurate, except when it's changing speed very rapidly, but that doesn't happen that much. Obviously, where it comes to to the map box stuff is 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 this whole map. And and again, right here, we're we're just you know we did a lot of stuff to remove those labels, and we're just showing you when you click into this screen, we're just showing you the two labels you care about, which is your station and your train. Mm -hmm. And now on the app, which I'll show you, we actually draw a custom polyline. We we remove all the other branches. We can't do that here because we don't know kind of where you're starting or where you're going. So we, we don't have your route. All you did was say you were at Jamaica. Um, so we can't, we don't remove as much from the map, but on the app, which I'll show, um, it's, it's even more uh, customized. So maybe I can show you the a similar experience in the app. Um, and a lot of the code is ported over. We, we, we reused a lot of that code actually, because um, our app is React Native. So our app is built kind of in JavaScript too. Um, so we could reuse a lot of this. So the name of the app um, on iPhone or an Android is Train Time, which is the top left one here. Um, and basically we can do something similar, which is in this case, we, we won't just say that we're going from uh, Jamaica. We can say we're going from Jamaica and then we give it a destination too. And we'll say we'll go, go to Penn Station. Basically, I'll go back and I said I wanted to go from Penn Station to Jamaica, right? So I, um, this shows me that route um, on the map, right? So again, we 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 actually, so we we still you can still see the the infrastructure, uh, which is those tracks, right? That's kind of all you see on the map. Um, in the background is is the tracks of the two railroads, Metro North going up and Long Island going east. But then of course, on top of that, we overlaid the dark green, which is the route you're gonna take. Um, and you are going from Penn Station on the left to Jamaica on the right. Um, the train happens to be at Penn Station, so it kind of obscures that label, but that's not always the case. Um, usually, in fact, if you're not catching a train from the terminal, the train won't be there, right? You know, mm -hmm. when you when it starts at Penn Station, it's sitting there and you can and you know, you go down to the track. When you're catching it at an outline station, it's not at your station yet uh, when you're looking usually. Any particular um, API frameworks or I mean, how do you actually surface the stuff to the mobile app? So we use um, Google, you know, Google has some standard for, for encoding polylines, for example, we use that um, to serve polylines. And then the other stuff we do in um, 
the other stuff is is just kind of served as as lat long. Again, there's some computation on the front end to do extrapolation. So it might be a, a GPS position that's three seconds old, but if the train is not, I mean, the train trains actually can't accelerate and decelerate that fast. So it, you know, if the train was going 41 miles an hour, you can kind of figure out where it's going to be right now. And again, you have to do that in the front end. You have to take your polyline that you were given, take the point you knew three seconds ago, and move it up three seconds worth of, of distance, uh, that stuff all has to happen in the front end because that's where we do the animations and what have you. Um, yeah, let's let's take a quick look at radar. Um, it's So you sent me, a, it's a public link, but you're saying it's not generally, it's not for the public necessarily. You know, we it, it's public, it's a public link. If the public wants to look at it, we don't really have that many people except rail fans looking at this that are not employees so i'm not terribly worried about this going viral <laughs> okay um yeah i mean rail fans i'm sure are excited but this is basically giving us like a, a, a system-wide view of the long island railroad right now exactly and, and and we can also do metro north as well which is that second railroad um and actually during rush hour you can have a whole set of trains on here but um yeah every single train uh, we'll tell you kind of how, you know, wh where it is, how many cars, what are the car numbers? Actually, I can click on here and you can see, let me give you a, a different train. Um, you can see how many people are in each car, the car numbers, kind of all the uh, stations it's hit, how late it was running. So you get a whole kind of a wealth of information um, that employees can use. This becomes particularly useful when... Um, one thing that we we've gotten some requests is let me turn off Metro North for a second is um, if a train is is stranded. So actually, that that one looks weird because we it's one of the few places we've done inf infrastructure changes in the last uh, in the last five years or so. I have to update that. But basically, if a train were to stop here, it's not stopped; it's moving. But if we're stopped here, and, and that does happen occasionally, you have some issue, you have a power issue, a trespasser strike, what have you. Previously, they'd have no idea. They, at best, they would know it was between two stations, right? Which could be a couple miles. It could, you know, probably that's a two-mile um, buffer. And now you can turn on the street names. This is a request from operations, and literally say, okay, the train is right here. You know, we need to drive into to 215th Street to reach the right of way to reach the train. Um, so especially when it's between <coughs> between stations and you need to get customers off, you need to find the train. And or maybe you need to find the head of the train where the engineer is, you know, whatever it is. So these kinds of tools allow us to to um, have definitely been useful um, in the moment for for. Um, let's say police to to locate the train, know where to park their car, get onto the right of way, know how many people are in that train. That's like that's for example standard practice when you have issues in with airplanes, right? They ask how many souls are on board. That's the pilot. Mm -hmm. We don't we didn't have the equivalent. I mean, the engineer who, who operates the train wouldn't actually know how many people are on their train. But now with this real time data um, and and the map like this, you can kind of immediately have this without having to ask anybody. Um, and so it completely streamlines that that whole process. There are other views in here that are less map based where you can just see every single train in the system, how many people are on each train. You know, you can do all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, you know, you can keep it you can keep it kind of as a big dashboard and then and then color those get colored by uh, um, for example, if they're running late or not, right? So now you have a lot of green, which is great. Um, these trains are running late, but um, you can immediately see are there issues on the systems. Um, so, so you're using Mapbox, and and uh, at least in the um, in the train time apps, you're actually replicating the you know the same app uh, on mobile and on the web version. Um, can you talk a little bit about like the the um, ability to to kind of move, like you said, make your code portable, move it around and repeat it in different places and try and get things looking the same in all three different places. Um, any issues with that? Any Anything come to mind that you want to talk about? We're lucky because we do use React Native for apps. So, so our apps are kind of JavaScript based. And of course, web apps, any web app these days is built in JavaScript. Um, so we were able to reuse a bit of 
there's a bit of logic as I was talking about in terms of just, you know, how to plot the line and determine where the train is and that kind of stuff um, that we were able to use, reuse on both platforms. Um, another great thing we're able to reuse is, you know, all that work I did on label placement, on custom label placement for every single station name, um, right? That comes out in the form of an, an, a, a part of that Mapbox style spec. And so I can just kind of copy and paste that if I do new work. Usually I do it in big chunks. So, you know, it, it can be annoying, obviously, when you have a few outlets to, to make a minor change. But, you know, when, when you do a really big piece of work and then to immediately have it copy over to all three um, is great. I can just kind of copy the new spec. Um, the labels, for example, used to not be horizontal. We used to kind of mimic the, the PDF map where they're at an angle. And I realized that wasn't terribly standard for, for digital maps and we could do better than that. So we did a lot of work and now I think they look really nice. And then I get that for free in Radar and I get that for free in the mobile app. Well, how about Mapbox Studio? Did that ever come into play when you're tinkering with the, the design layout? Yeah, that's we kind of use it as like a design um, studio, as a studio, uh, quite literally. Um, I think maybe for other people, because we want to version our our styles, so we use it as a studio to workshop different ideas and and looks, and then we export that style and then make the changes in in um, sort in uh, version control. Um, so that is, I mean, that's the place to play around with different ideas and see what they look like and. Um, we use that all the time, actually. Awesome. Um, can you tell me more about how the MTA chose Mapbox for these particular applications? I would say Will Fisher chose Mapbox um, and Will works at the MTA. And I chose it because, you know, it, it's just head and shoulders above the customizability of the other options I, in my head that was Google and well so I, you know you can't even use Apple Maps because they don't have I don't think they have Apple Maps or Android so if you want to run your app on Android why would you choose Apple Maps because you're just going to have to use Google on the Android one so really it's only between Mapbox and Google at that point and you know at least four years ago and I, I'm pretty sure still to this day uh you know there's there's no there's no competition in terms of you know if you want a customizable map Mapbox is kind of the only player in that business. Uh, what kinds of things are on the horizon um, for mapping in transit that we may not be thinking about that you may be thinking about? I think, that especially on the mapping side, the one thing that's on my mind that is, it's very hard to do, it definitely takes a lot of work and it's probably why we haven't done it is a lot of, a lot of the data I showed you is, is, is um, GIS based, um, or sorry, G, G, it's like geographic. Right, because it comes out of Besri and it like is, is real world geography. You know, people often think in terms of the schematic map, um, mm -hmm. and and I think schematic maps do a better job of kind of presenting that sort of information. You just want to know that you don't need to know that one station is three point four miles from the other, right? And in many cases, the scale can throw you off because certain stations are really far apart and others are not. And um, I would love to do something, and we can do this in Mapbox if we kind of create our custom ge geography that's not tied to the real world, world geography, but like literally create a custom schematic in Mapbox and just pretend that the coordinates are real um, and, and display some of this data in that form. So I can show you that the train is between these stations approximately 80%, but it just won't show you all the like little peculiarities of the geographic data, um, which... Sometimes I can see, you know, I can see people liking that, but I can also see for most people, they could, they mostly want the kind of high level of what's going on in a, in a visual map format, but it doesn't have to be the geographic format. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I would love to do. And I think we can do um, here. Uh, and I think in any agency could do for their own agency, it's a little hard to do algorithmically, um, but that's kind of one place where my head's at and we'll see if that stuff pans out. All right, Will, thanks so much for your time and thanks for sharing these uh, amazing projects you're working on. Cool, thank you. Great chatting. Thanks for tuning in to this Developer Spotlight video. We love to hear what developers in the Mapbox community are working on. So please share your project on Twitter with the hashtag BuiltWithMapbox. See you at the next one.